Hey, what's up guys? I'm Rick Torn and welcome back to Victoria 3, Voice of the People. So in today's episode, we might be dealing with a civil war, a uh, revolution here. I don't know though, uh, because they do not have a lot of support. And you'll see here that the progress is supposed to go down by 10%. So they're going to be losing the progress they got by that event. But I did not know just how much this system had been changed, because frankly, I never have to interact with it, because I avoid any revolutions or civil wars from happening. Uh, so I never really interact with, with this mechanic. But yeah, this has definitely changed a lot more than I was expecting, uh, where now it's, yeah, it's just completely different, you know, with the uh, way it kind of resembles the laws in a sense. You know, it fills up the meter here, has that uh, checkpoint, and then you get an event that either you know decreases or increases the, the progress towards a revolution. So it's very much like the law system now. Of course, the progress of the law system is measured differently since it's, uh, you know, the percentage is just the chance of succeeding at that checkpoint. And then you have the three different sets of checkpoints, which this one's clearly different than that. So obviously not quite the same, but uh, it, it's a lot more different than, than I thought it was. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump into today's episode by taking care of a few economic things. And then we're going to be taking a look at a, a few things we need to do with our diplomacy. So the first thing is we got two techs and then I didn't make use of them. The first was canneries. So this requires more iron and fish. Uh, fish is actually pretty cheap in our market. Uh, it will reduce the cost of grain, which helps our poor folks. And, uh, you know, I think uh, iron is something that we're, you can see we're working on right now. And then, of course, it's going to make groceries cheaper. So that's helpful. Uh, so let's go and switch over to that, and then also we got the artillery one, the smooth bores. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this too. Artillery should become really cheap, while small arms might become too expensive. We'll see. We'll see how it looks. So those are the two adjustments we needed to make based on the technologies that we got last episode. And we also need to take a look at our trade rounds here. We have some that aren't very profitable, so they're not really trading much because they're not profitable, but there's no reason to keep them going. So let's go and cancel all these. We don't even need most of that stuff there. Just reduce the, the number of trade rounds we have, which will get us more bureaucracy. And as of right now, this is what we have. We'll see if, uh, you know, once we finish with the, the adjustments we're making to our economy, see if there's any other trade rounds we might, might want to do. Uh, another thing we need to do here is now that we got all this bureaucracy, let's go ahead and invest it in one of our institutions. And it probably makes sense to do the home affairs, because in the fact that we're dealing with a revolution right now, obviously I don't know if this would... Uh, you know, be finished in time to have any effect, but maybe the revolution doesn't even fire. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. Let's go and invest in that institution for now, though. And then we also need to do some stuff with diplomacy. Uh, so I want to go ahead and set up a defensive pact with the Papal States. We're going to increase our relations with them, uh, with the Pope. Uh, makes sense as Louis Napoleon, given his relationship with the Pope, uh, and our kind of focus on the Catholic religion here. And then with the Greeks, I had completely forgot that in Victoria 3, you do not start out with the ability to have multiple alliances. You know, that's something uh, that you don't really have in other Paradox games. Uh, in this game, you have to get a technology to have the multi-alliances. And so we really shouldn't have allied with Greece of all countries. We should have just done a defensive pact. So we're going to end the alliance. I know this is going to irritate them, but they are not a good ally. And, you know, even if they do a, an attack on the on the Ottomans, we can still support them in that because, you know, obviously we have all this set as our interest. And so, yeah, we could still help them out, even if it's an offensive war, if we don't have an alliance. So there, there's really no reason to have that. It pulls them into our wars, but, you know, they're not going to help us out that much. I want to ally with the Russians. And so since we can only have one alliance, we have to get rid of the Greek one. And we'll see if the Russians are going to be open to allying with us. But yeah, we want like a great power, at least a major power, as an ally. You know, somebody who can actually help us out in any wars we might find ourselves in, uh, offensive or defensive. And then with the agitators, we have two agitators here that we could bring in to enact autocracy a lot easier. In fact, if these guys are popular enough, which this guy here uh, is very popular, then you can get it where you have a 100% chance of enacting the law. And so it, it's very easy to enact. You just have to fill it up three times, basically, to get through each step. So yeah, it would be pretty easy to do. All right, so yeah, stopping those routes. The Papal States did accept. Now they want alliance since we uh, no longer have the alliance with the Greeks, but we're gonna turn them down that. We do not want to ally with them. 
Instead, what we want to do is bring them into our market. Uh, however, we would require to give them an obligation. So before we do that, because they could use that to try and force us into an alliance with them, uh, let's go ahead and get our alliance set up with the Russians first. Though it looks like they might not be interested in doing so just yet. Let's just take a look at this here. Are we still considered to be allied with the Greeks? No, we're not. Yeah, because the... Oh, they probably have an ally already. That's what the deal is. Uh, who are they allied with? They're allied with the, the Austrians. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, well, we'll just have to leave it open for now then and not accept any alliance offers. We're going to go ahead and just give the Papal States that obligation to get them into our customs union. There is one other option for doing this, uh, but they're a little bit far away, so I don't know if we could get them in a high enough opinion. So looking at the customs unions. This is Sardinia uh, Piedmont. And you can see they're negative 43. So I don't know if we can make up for that. But the Papal States would accept as long as we give them that obligation. So that's what we're going to do. So let's get them into our customs union. And that's going to uh, change our economy a lot. So let's let the week go. And then we're going to take a look and see what adjustments we need to make now. All right, so iron is still a problem, but we're still working on that. Nothing's too bad at the moment. I mean, obviously many things that we want to improve on, but nothing's really horrible at this point. Uh, so we could work on the fine art and the coal. So that's what we'll do, because we got the three iron mines going currently. So we're going to get that set up. We want to do the fine arts, the art academies, and we already have one going. That's clearly them building it, the pops. We'll build one more, why not? Uh, those don't really produce a lot. As you can see, we're getting uh, one for each one of those. Uh, so there's still gonna be a very high demand even with two of these for the fine arts. Uh, so we're gonna get that and then we're also gonna get ourselves some coal. So these are the coal locations that we have. I think we get bonuses, if I'm not mistaken. I have to close this to be able to see the bonuses. Okay, there they are when we're looking at this. So I think we get bonuses here and here. And those are where we currently have these built. So let's go and focus on here then for the coal mines. So we'll get like four of those. Custom Junior was accepted, so they were not part of the market yet. So we hadn't seen their effect. So we'll see what it looks like now that they're in it. Probably not going to have a huge change here, but yeah, I mean, it's not a huge change, but there's been some adjustments. Uh, so we've seen that the revolution did tick down by 10%, but we also have two events here. So I assume that this is going to end up bringing it back up. Now uh, there's one other thing I forgot to do. We need to spend our authority since we're not working on laws currently. So a voice for liberalism currently on the rise has resonated with the intelligentsia. Uh, so this will be a radical character assuming leadership of the of the interest group. Where we say this is far too extreme for French politics. And this would irritate them. They currently like us. Hmm. Who currently leads the intelligentsia? Let's just take a look. who their current leader is. They already have a reformer here. Okay. Well, I think we'll, uh, we'll just let them. Let's see what happens. I'm just kind of curious. So this is their, their new radical. It doesn't really matter because we're suppressing them anyways. And that's what we need to use this authority for is we're gonna actually boost the armed forces to bolster them try and make them more powerful and then we're going to start suppressing well, it looks like we can't because they're in government that's right so we can't suppress them because they're in government we'll have to wait until they're out of government so we'll just boost the armed forces for now I'm looking for other people who support the Bonapartes could do the bourgeoisie they currently support the Bonapartes. I don't think bringing them into government would help us much as far as laws go. They do really like us and the current laws we have. So we could boost them, I suppose. Not that I really want them more powerful, but 
if they get more powerful, then they're taking power from the other interest groups. So that's what I'm looking at. It. So we'll boost them, and they're pretty weak at the moment. So the mob approaches. Belligerent crowds have been gathering increasingly provocative when confronted by troops in Algiers. Hardliners and government are demanding tougher responses, while doves are calling for troops to stand down as the first hopeful step in de-escalation. Is this going to affect Algiers? No. So we can disperse the crowd by force. And that's a plus 5% of pops in Algiers become more radical. Or you reduce the civil war chance by 10%, but we have a 0% chance right now. Or you say order the troops to stand down. There's a chance that it increases or that they become more loyalist. We're going to go with that option. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you which one of those you got, it looks like. That's yeah, kind of a bummer. They really ought to let you know what you got there. Uh, stirring radicalism. The radical liberal currents in parts of France are causing local revolutionary activity. So you can say it could happen anywhere. So a lot of pops on Aquitaine become more radical. Uh, or we say it reside, resides at the heart of our nation, and this would be in our capital. Well, we already have the revolution over here in Aquitaine, so let's just go with that. Really, we don't want any more radicals than we already have. Uh, we do have a lot of radicals currently. And Spain just does not want a good relationship with us for whatever reason. They got some beef with us. All right, some more events now that we got through that checkpoint. So the good word of the revolution. Proponents of liberal reforms are looking to spread their ideas to our neighboring countries. So we say what we are, they will be. And then the British get this event, Echoes Revolution. And this is going to appease the trade union's royal folk and intelligentsia. So that would actually be a good thing for us. Or you say this contagion must be contained. No. Let's do this. Let's cause the British some problems. <laughs> uh, heavy handedness. Louis Napoleon Bonaparte mistook an enemy in the intelligentsia. Uh, after accusing them of false charges, moderates and in intelligentsia defected to the rural folks' cause. So we say their bedfellows may not be so accommodating. Get 5% uptick of the revolution here. 50% chance that the intelligentsia and rural folk are going to get some bonuses here. Or 50% chance that it's going to backfire on them. Okay, so 50 50 chance of. A good thing happening. Or you say Louis Napoleon Bonaparte should stand down, in which case we'll get the penalty no matter what, but we'll re decrease the the revolution chance, which is already at zero. So let's go with this one and, and hope for, for the good, out, good outcome. But again, it doesn't tell you what you get here. Clearly, whatever we did helped disband that movement. So are they just, uh, yeah, they're not really unhappy with us anymore. At the negative five, so it's not a problem. We got rid of it. So we will not have a civil war in today's episode. I wasn't sure. Uh, we actually are doing great on money here. So let's go ahead and get some more construction going. More construction sectors. Uh, so we're up to ten in the capital. So let's go ahead and build up some of these other locations then. So we're going to do... Up to three here and up to three here. And tick that up to the top. Well, I mean, we are almost done with these. But yeah, these are so quick, though. Let's just get them done. And that'll probably be too much. It's hard for me to to guess now because it's, it's different. Uh, because, you know, the, the construction uh, doesn't, you know, get entirely paid for the government at this point. Uh, because it's being paid for by the pops as well. Uh, so where before you were paying for all the construction, but then you had, you know, the uh, uh, the investment pool that was going to you, you know, it was more uh, easier to tell, you know, just how much each construction sector was going to cost you. Now I kind of got to get used to the, the new system. So I'm not sure how much each one will do, but it's fine. We'll just figure it out as we go. Uh, so we got the crystal glass unlocked. So that's that new production method. I uh, don't know how we're doing in lead. I know we have access to lead though, so... I'm not too worried about it. Let's go ahead and change up these glass factories, if it's profitable, of course, which it would actually not be. Okay, probably because, yeah, lead would just be too expensive. So we need to improve the cost of lead first then, since it's not profitable. So the next thing we're gonna get is also in production. We're gonna get the mechanized workshops. So that'll take 22 months again. I've already got a port building over here. 
That's somewhere in our production queue. I wasn't too worried about it, so we kind of let it set up there for a while, but we can take care of it now. Armed forces are now influential, so clearly our attempts to bolster them have been successful. And we are still in the positive, but we haven't gotten the full construction going yet, so yeah, I do expect that to go down some. That's okay. As long as we don't you know, spend too much, because again, I want to keep some in our gold reserves, which it looks like that number is going down, but it's actually going up. It's just remember, our total gold reserves are getting higher, and that little bar there represents, you know, a smaller percentage of the total. So we got that same event again. Let's see how the industrials currently feel. We got plenty of room to take a little hit to their opinion. Looks like we should be getting those iron mines done here soon. But yeah, we definitely need to need to step up our construction there. Because we've seen that the British and the Russians have been pulling ahead of it when it comes to the, the GDP. Alright, so this would be a radical here in the bourgeoisie, so we do we do not want that. Alright, we're just gonna have to lose the opinion with them. I knew we were gonna have issues boosting them. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I'm trying to keep the Bonapartist in power there. Oh, we're currently suppressing them. My bad. I meant to bolster them. <laughs> I just clicked the wrong thing. Alright, so I was actually suppressing them. And so that would have been strengthening some of the people I wanted to, to weaken. But you see the armed forces have gotten a lot more powerful. They're like 18% or something. And we've already boosted them. But yeah, I was trying to boost the bourgeoisie. So we can change that up. Yeah, that was my bad. I just clicked on the wrong button. Uh, so, infertile grounds. Finding both the French public and supposed political allies unreceptive to his ideas. Uh, frustrated. I have no idea how to pronounce this guy's name. I don't think he's a historical character. No, he's not, because I've never heard of him. Uh, but has decided to retire from the realm of politics, opting instead to spend the rest of his days penning embittered reflections on what we could have been, or what could have been. So, he say, let him peddle his ideas in peace away from Paris. And then we won't have to deal with him as an agitator. But the bourgeoisie would get increased interest group pop attraction, which we're actually working on right now anyway by bolstering them, so that'd be fine. Uh, here he does come up as a, an agitator, but he'll be exiled. And then we'll irritate the bourgeoisie. Or we could go with this option to kind of boost him using our money and increasing his popularity, which we do not want to do. Because he wants to enact a presidential republic, which we do not want. So let's do this one here. I think that's the best option there. And they're happy with it, so we're going to get more bureaucracy, which is great. And Spain has stopped trying to damage relations with us. Okay, so that's good. Um, so let me just take a look. If they would de do the defense pact, they would. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll get that established. And so now we have defensive pacts with the Papal States and with Greece. Uh, but as far as the allies go, unfortunately, I didn't look at the Russians ally us. It didn't change anything because I still don't want to be allied to the Greeks. I think there's better options available. Uh, Spain would actually accept an alliance if we owed them an obligation. The United States are declining. Basically, the only one that would accept without an obligation would be the Papal States. Okay. I don't really see one to ally with any of those options on there anyways. So I feel like Prussia is kind of a long-term enemy here. We did get that Home Affairs level 2, but yeah, as they start to try and form Germany and annex all the other German princes here, they're going to be a rival right on our borders. So, just for the long term, yeah, I just don't think alliance is wise with them. Uh, so again, we're getting an event with the bourgeoisie, with the radical, and yeah, this is uh, a bummer that keeps on firing in the same damn event. So we just keep on getting the opinion hit here, and yeah, that's a real shame. And now we see that this character here, this agitator, is attempting to enact a residential, excuse me, a presidential republic here. Um, so we need to exile him. Now, this is going to irritate them and result in them having more radicals. Yeah, we don't want him here. He's just too well liked for all this. So let's get rid of him. So he's been exiled from France now because we are not interested in going with the 
presidential republic here. All right, so the Spanish want to enter into a trade agreement with us. We don't even have much trading going on. Now, this would help us to, you know, increase in relations with them. But, yeah, I don't think that's what we want to, to currently, currently do, guys. So I'm just taking a look. We can't even get the autocracy now, but I don't see how much the support has increased or decreased. So it's actually at 25%, so it has gotten a bit lower. But I want to see if there's any other laws we might want to work on. That we, that we have access to, I should say. Because, yeah, we don't have access to these ones here. Uh, you know, I'd love to to try and enact this, but we don't have the, the technology for it yet to go with either private or public. We need the pharmaceuticals. So that's not an option. Uh, same thing with pretty much most of the laws here. We don't have the technology for them. So we'll have to wait till we get access to those. So yeah, all of them require us to, to get certain techs. Uh, tenant farmers is another one I would like to change away from. Probably just go to the commercialized agriculture. But again, requires a tech we don't have yet. So yeah, I don't think there's anything we want to do at laws for now. Let's keep on investing into our institutions. So we don't have enough bureaucracy to do it any further. So we'd have to, to build some government administration buildings. Uh, we do need to get some stuff constructing here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to work on. So we're already doing the coal. So that'll bring the price down some. I'm not entirely sure how much one each one of these is producing. 200 a piece. So yeah, that's going to result in coal getting pretty cheap. So we don't need any more of those. I'm not too worried about luxury clothes. I think we're going to do something for the transportation and the iron yeah, that's what we'll work on. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with the, the railways here. And build them in any... And we're going to focus on the locations that either don't have infrastructure and need more or don't have the rails and would connect because I just like to connect all my locations. Uh, so these guys don't have one. So we have two there. I'm guessing we were having infrastructure issues there. All right, so let's get this one here. And here, all the way up through, well, that one doesn't even connect there. <laughs> so now it'll connect. You got that one here. We're doing Alsace-Lorraine as well. And then maybe get those locations going next. All right, so that should be good there. And then we want to do the iron as well. Seems we're always needing more iron. Uh, let's go ahead and go with uh, Burgundy. I'll do one more here. There we go. Beautiful. So that'll keep them busy for a little while. Satisfying our our good needs there. And so Spain now wants a defensive pact. All right, interesting. We boosted their opinion. We've changed the way they feel about us. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of want to stay friendly with them. And who's going to attack Spain? I mean, other than the United States, I suppose they might end up going to war with them. Um, yeah, let's do the defensive pact with Spain. Though I don't know if we'll ally with them. But yeah, we'll do the defensive pact. And I suppose we want to go ahead and start getting ready for the next war. Yeah, let's go ahead and go after... I think we're going to do Morocco next. Before the Spanish attack them. I think that'd be wise. Uh, also, it looks like we have another region here that needs a port. Yeah, this, this location here. Uh, so yeah, we can go ahead and build it up. It's not connected to any of our other locations that already have a port. So we'll go ahead and build that up. Just get the one port so they'll have access to our markets and we'll have access to theirs. And looks like the native tribes here are just about wiped out. Americans and the Mexicans have been slowly either colonizing or conquering them. Alright, so over here how are, how are we doing on the infamy? We should be completely burned down, yeah. No infamy problems. So I guess we'd want to do the play for somewhere over here. So yeah, we'll do that. Uh, the Spanish would side with us. That's interesting. And we'll be trying to get this so they couldn't go after that themselves. We'll see if anybody else joins. Hopefully not. But yeah, if they want to join, then we'll, we'll fight them too. Uh, and then we'll want to add to this. 
Oh, it looks like we already have uh, the ability to just do the return to state because we have claims here. Okay, so probably should have just done that for that one as well. Uh, but yeah, we'll do that. And we're going to want to add all those in here. And I don't know that we'll want to make them primary demands. We'll see what happens if we need the maneuvers. Could sway the Spanish to joining. So if somebody else gets involved, we could get some assistance from Spain. So let's just see what happens. Let's see if anybody else gets involved with this. Now as far as how many troops they have, they have 32 with the ability to pull up 19 more. So it will be a larger conflict, particularly now that Tunis just joined. They've been swayed. Uh, but the British just declared their neutrality. Could just conquer them both and just get a ton of infamy, I suppose. Uh, we do have some events here. Yeah, this is a little irritating. Okay, so we're just going to go with that option because we're just going to keep on pissing them off. I'm not entirely sure where that has to keep on firing, but now we're not going to want to bolster them anymore because they're not uh, supporting Napoleon. Uh, now here, let's just see where they're at. Yeah, we got a lot of room to lose with the industrialists, so we'll go with this option here. So let's go ahead and stop bolstering them. They didn't get much support from us. So we could work on bolstering somebody else like the Catholic Church. Because, yeah, there's not really anybody here that I'd like to, to suppress. I mean, the rural folk do have a lot of power. And there's not really anything that they uh, agree with us on. So I suppose you could, ins instead of boosting the Catholic Church, you could instead suppress them. Yeah, I guess we'll do that. Get their support a little bit lower. Alright, so so far, it's only been Tunis that has joined. And we still have some more maneuvers remaining. Not much. Not enough to make all these primary goals, but they're not going to bounce out of it anyway, it looks like. So yeah, what we can do is go ahead and have Tunis return to us as well. So this should work out well because we'll get them both conquered in one conflict. Uh, of course, we're getting all that infamy now. And we'll get more once we actually conquer them. And they have an additional 18 units that we'll have to fight. So it does look like this is going to kick up. So let's go ahead and raise our troops. I'm not sure if they're going to back down or not. They decided not to. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get... I don't know how many troops we need to mobilize. So 32 over there and 18 over there. So we could just bring his 20 in. We also got this character here who's decent. So we could bring his 15 for total 35 there. But yeah, you need to split up. We need to split up these armies basically. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get another general in France. Somebody who we can make use of here. So he's wounded, unfortunately. And he starts out wounded. He's got the offensive planner. And he's got the reserved. So he would still be better, even with the wounded. Because the reserved makes up for that penalty there. So he would still be better than this character here. I feel. Unless you just want to devastate their territory. Uh, so we're going to go with him. So with him recruited, how many units does he have? So he has 18. We could have just promoted one of these guys, I suppose, and then they would have took a, a higher percentage of the units there. I could have just uh, promoted him, for instance. Maybe I should have done that instead of hiring another guy. I didn't realize he was in the France HQ. That's fine, though. We're just going to mobilize these three. I think that's probably enough. Or this four, actually. We should also get this guy. And he's in North Africa, too. So you could not mobilize him, and then he would be used for defense, as you can see. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. So we're going to bring these three into the fight. Oh, I guess we need to get them assigned to the front. And so what I'm thinking is we're going to send the 15 over here with his 18 and then our new general will go over here 18 against 18 
Remember, we should have better technology than them. And so it should put us in a good front here. Uh, they are conscripting, so they will have additional troops. I think that's fine, though. Uh, the Ottomans just started up a play against the Egyptians. They're going to try and get control of the Nile. Now, the Ottomans won that last war. Again, that doesn't happen often. And so, yeah, they're going to declare the neutrality here. This war here is allowing us to to make sure they, they stay out of the conflict, which they might not have wanted to join anyways. Perhaps the only reason why they started this up was because we were busy. Although I don't think we have an interest in Egypt, so they don't even care about us at all. All right, two arms. Okay, so let's go ahead and declare our neutrality in this. So we're gonna get the notifications about us, because yeah, I don't really care about this situation. All right, so you see that we are set to win on both fronts. 23 against 19. And we'll see just how good our troops are once these battles start up here. So yeah, look at the offense of 67 to 14 here. And uh, 64 to 29 over here. So it does look like we got the bad uh, battle conditions in that battle at least. But yeah, this shouldn't be too bad. We'll turn it down a little bit since we're at war, but uh, it should be a pretty quick conflict overall. Should be able to win on both fronts and get uh, all of them conquered in one war. We're also able to burn off this infamy a little bit. Remember, we burn off infamy slower now because of the pursuing natural borders. So this should start up soon. Yeah, it looks like that war's starting now. So we'll see if the Ottomans are successful again with Egypt having failed that first one. It does make succeeding this time much more difficult. They're getting a lot of uh, problems with radicalism here in France. Okay, so yeah, I guess we'll go with this one. We don't, we don't want Paris getting rowdy. Everybody knows what happens when when Paris gets rowdy. Or every French le leader should know. So let's let's not uh, allow that to happen there. So unfortunately, it looks like there's the two separate fronts here now. So the, our main army is over here, but we have that army on defense. Helping us out. So once we get this conquered, then he can come down here. He should hopefully come down there. Again, they, the generals are, are generally better about moving to the different fronts now than they used to be. You don't have to babysit them as much. And so we'll see if he moves to the most rational front, which would be the one down here. As soon as this battle's over. That should result in him taking over, hopefully, all this. So he can move down south there. Maybe he has to do one more battle, though. We'll just have to see. He got lost along the way, so because of that, that's 50% less provinces. And now it's split again. But we're in a, we're in a good situation here, because yeah, his units are all right here. Completely cut off. Not that that actually has any effect in the game. These guys will somehow be able to escape from here over to here. It looks like they're now attacking us, but they're going to fail just because they're low offense. So it's just them taking casualties unnecessarily. We do seem to be advancing over here just fine, so no problems there. And so we'll see where he ends up going. Yeah, he comes over here, which again is the most rational location for him to go to. The real country, opposed to what they see as the artificially imposed political ideals of the revolution, members of the country's traditional classes are coming out in support of the Bonaparte cause. Okay, so we can say a toast to the hardworking Tiller and his family. This would boost the rural folk. And then they'd become... Which leader is this? Uh, he'd become orally honest from a radical. So, I mean, that's better than a radical, I suppose. Or we could do it with the Catholic Church. God bless the parish priest and the flock he leads. And he's currently a legitimist. And then he'd become orally honest. I don't understand why they're becoming orally honest, though. I mean, shouldn't they be coming... I mean, no matter what, you get the, the bonus of five to this, but shouldn't they become Bonapartist? Like, that's what it would lead you to believe here. Or you say, together we shall safeguard France from godless radicals. Considering how long this takes, it's normally ten years, but you're speeding up, so you're, you're taking off time here. I believe that'd be one per month, is what we're currently getting. One per month, that'd be twelve per year, and then ten years to get the 120. Uh, so so essentially, you're cutting off 10 months 
with this one here while these ones are cutting off five months and you're getting interest group approval but i think they're supposed to become a not worthy honest but bonapartist i think it's a bug it doesn't make any sense given the wording here so because of that let's just go over this one here and you're cutting off a lot of time as well so that helps 10 months to get that 10 months quicker to get that done i think it's helpful uh, but yeah, we'll control all this territory here. Now, these guys, let me just see there. Yeah, they're still a puppet of the Ottoman Empire. Not so given the coloring, but I wanted to confirm. And this is uh, something new, or, you know, new to me. They now get the, the field promotions. If a character dies or resigns in battle... Uh, then, then another character within that HQ will get a field promotion. I don't really like that. I want to have control over my generals when they get promotions. Uh, but we did get Tunisia all conquered. Uh, they had to capitulate, and then we got them conquered. So now we just have to wait for Morocco. And so, yeah, that one really smooth. Added them to our territory. I guess we might want to go ahead and do that one option. It's not this one. I always forget which one it is. I think it's uh, Political Lens. And then reset the production methods here. There we go. Beautiful. All right. So they now have the the extra army over here as well. So they'll do this even quicker, getting them conquered. And yeah, you can see that we we did get a good battle condition this time. But so did they. Captured six provinces there. Now we have this French Foreign Legion to get all those units here. And I wonder if we won't end up just getting a lot of those from this territory we're conquering. So we might not have to build that much in order to get that done. Because I was thinking, like, you'd have to have three barracks that are 20 size total. That's 60 units. I bet if we conquer all this and have, like, 30 units, and really, we already got it halfway done. Now, given they might not all be in three barracks, they'd have to be in three barracks for that to work, I think. All right, so we defeated Morocco as well. We got them conquered. Let's go ahead and do the reset production methods. All right, excellent. So now we can start colonizing over here. That's what I was waiting on is getting Morocco conquered. Uh, just because it would have been like a weird situation otherwise. And we'll establish colonies in all three of these locations here. So we'll start working on that, getting all that area colonized. Um, we do need to get them conquered. So let me just take a look. Because, yeah, I did think that they had been the one we had just seen pop up with the British. They owe an obligation to them now. So what did it? What did they give them? I don't see anything here. Did they just help them out with their debts? Maybe that's what it was. They helped them out with their debt, and now they owe an obligation to the British. Okay, so the British could do something there. So conquering them sooner rather than later would be a good idea. If we do it now with our infamy this high, though, then we can almost guarantee that somebody's going to get involved. Uh, so what I'd like to do is probably wait till the British are in another war so they won't be interested in helping them out there. Since they now have some type of interest there, apparently. Uh, so we got the mechanized workshops. All right, excellent. So we're going to want to take a look at the furniture manufacturers and the textile mills. Let's go and get another tech selected. There's not a lot of level 2 tech still remaining that I want to get at this moment. The chemical bleaching is nice, though. So I think we're going to do that. Yeah, let's go and get the chemical bleaching next. And that's pretty much it here for the production right now. For level 2. The first level 3 tech I want to get is actually in society. Yeah, here you just got the logistics. Which does get access to the triage. But yeah, I think it's going to be the society tech next. So we can go ahead and set that up since I know it's what I want to do. So I generally, oops, my bad. We don't want to uh, stop that one. So let's put that one in here and then queue this one. I generally don't uh, queue text. I like to do them, um, I like to like do them as we unlock them. So I can pick the one that I feel like we need the most at that specific moment. And I just like going in the, the text screen regularly as well. So because they're uh, a subject to the Ottomans, they did go to war with, with Egypt, and they're being invaded into. So we won't mess with them yet, because we don't want to, we're not going to mess with the Ottomans yet. I think the priority should be 
these guys here. That'll be the next uh, conflict. We'll declare one of them. Continue with our colonization efforts in Africa as well. So you see that uh, we're slowly getting to colonize again. It's it's, it's very slow. <laughs> uh, so we'll get one little province right there here in a few days. Gonna get another one there. But yeah, we see that the, the British and the Danish are competing here with us in this region. I don't think they have as many colonies though, so overall we're getting the territory faster than them, but clearly there's going to be a required war there, I think. I'm mean, going to speed this up now that the uh, conflict is over. Oh yes, we need to build some stuff as well. And this radical politician here, the trade unions, died. And so now they're happy with us, and they no longer want to enact the presidential republic, so that should go away soon. But we're still getting these stirring radicalism events though, unfortunately. That's a bummer, man. Look at the, the radicals. That's 6.5 million. And we got some serious issues with radicals currently. It'd be great if we could get some laws enacted, but again, there's nothing really that we want to work on. But that would help, help the situation. Yeah, either we already have everything that we want, or can't get it yet due to the lack of technology. So unfortunately, we're having problems with radicals. Uh, we're still boosting the armed forces. They're at 22.7%. Rural folk is losing power here. 8.9%, 7.6% for the intelligentsia. And another location needs a port here. And is that going to connect with anywhere else? No. So we're going to get them one. Yes, I was supposed to, to build here. I mean, it's not like you can't use the money, of course. But there's a lot of stuff we need. Uh, we have a shortage of explosives currently, so clearly that's where our priority should be. I'm a little surprised. We also got the production method for the glassworks that I didn't initiate, so we can go ahead and do that. So that produces a lot more glass, makes it super cheap, which means, well, lead's also going to get really expensive, uh, well, which means we can go ahead and switch over to the ceramics. Overall, prices are going to change significantly here. Uh, and then we can also go to the mechanized workshops. Yeah, these are going to have huge effects. We're going to go for the submachines too. But huge effects currently. Now we're not going to go for any of the automation right now. Yeah, huge effects on our uh, our goods. So we're going to let. Well, we won't let it update. You can see it already has. All right, good. Uh, so we need to get the explosives, and we need to get the lead. Let me just double check that we have the chemical plants. We do not, so that makes sense. Uh, so this will result in fertilizer getting more expensive, but I think fertilizer was kind of cheap before. Uh, so I suppose that's fine. So that'll help with the explosive shortage. In fact, we might not even need anything there. We'll have to wait and see, but the, the lead on the other hand, we're still going to definitely need to, to construct that so we can work on lead. Uh, let's go ahead and get some lead mines producing. I don't think we've done any lead yet in this series. Any lead mines, I mean. That's our first time looking at where our locations are. It looks like we got a lot in Africa. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Let's build one there. And then the rest of these we're going to put into Africa based on their workers. So it seems that Constantine is a place that has the most workers available. So we're going to build a bunch there. And this would really help to make the people here like us more if we just build in their territory. Uh, we can see that dye is an issue, but again, it's something that we have access to. We have several locations that can produce dye for us. Uh, so we're gonna go with the location that has the most labor. I don't know how many of this we need. I didn't even bother to look. Yeah, that's probably a good number for right now. And then we still need the coal as well. So let's get, let me see how many of these are producing. These are producing 40 a piece. Uh, so yeah, we're going to get uh, two more here. And then three more over there. All right, so that's enough to go and let it start playing. And then we still need steel as well. So let's go and work on that, the steel mills. So I think we're building these in Normandy. So we'll build three over there. 
And let's see how things have adjusted. And then of course we always need the tooling workshop, so we'll go ahead and do that as well. And Normandy has two and has another one getting built currently. Let's just take a look at our labor here. I almost want to just keep on building here because they have so much extra labor there. Yeah, let's just go ahead and build here and this is going to be our like our tooling location. So yeah, we'll get it going there. We are losing money currently, but that's okay. So I think this is just notifying us one by one. This one will connect here, so I'm not too worried about it. And there's not really much here anyways. So I don't think it's a big deal. They're not connected to the market. Eventually they will be. I don't want to build a port there right now. Let's focus on the other stuff that we got going over here. We got plenty of stuff for our, our people to, to work on and to build. And Ottoman Empire is trying to make Persia into a dominion. Well, that's quite ambitious, isn't it? Also, this guy just retired. Remember, he was a radical in the intelligentsia, so that's good. And uh, this is a new mechanic here, so we're going to take a look at this. Well, it's right up here on the screen. <laughs> of course it is. Uh, so this is the petitions. So one of the, the complaints uh, that people have had with Victoria is that due to the political movements, those that are outside of government, because you got to be outside of government to support a political movement, so those interest groups that are outside of government have a way to support certain laws being enacted. But those that are in government actually had less initiative than those that weren't. They had no way to say, hey, you know, we want to work on this. And so this is a new mechanic here uh, that anybody in government, any interest group in government can petition the government for a certain law to be passed. Uh, so in this case, they want the oligarchy to be passed, which really, we don't really want to go with. Uh, and if you don't enact it, then there are penalties. And so we see that right here. Uh, so if we fail, which I'm not entirely sure how you fail. Let me just take a look at that. Okay, so that's if the armed forces are out of government, then they get a negative 20. And now if time runs out, you only get a negative 15, but then they'll be removed from government. That's interesting. Yeah, the problem here is we're not looking to enact oligarchy. We want to go to autocracy. So yeah, I really don't want to, to work on this and piss everybody off. For oligarchy we want to go over here yeah that's a shame because armed forces would actually support going to that and I highly doubt that would get rid of this yeah it's a bummer okay well is what it is not much we can do there guys and yeah we just keep on getting the same damn event here this is clearly I don't know I don't know if it's broken or is working as designed. But yeah, it just keeps on, on firing. Like, why are we getting so many damn radicals? <laughs> is it just this? This here? Not entirely sure. We don't need to be notified of this, though. This is getting all filled up by, by stuff. I can't even tell what's going on here now. Uh, so we have this event again. Uh, so it doesn't really matter if this gets set back. So we'll just go with this. Because, yeah, it goes right back immediately. I don't think it checks to see if you're on the next sa stage yet. Because you shouldn't be getting those events once you're in at this point. Because it just goes right back up. Because now this is the meter that matters here. So, I mean, like, that usual. It's a paradox patch and, and DLC. <laughs> there, there are bugs. Uh, we got the pharmaceuticals. Okay, well, that's excellent. Because that unlocks the private and public health insurance. So we could actually work on a law right now. Because, uh, yeah, we would like to get something here, and we do have the bureaucracy. Um, so let's go with, I feel that public health insurance makes more sense for, for Napoleon here. Uh, so we're going to go with that one. Who's this going to irritate? The industrialists, as you'd expect. Uh, the trade unions and the Catholic Church would be happy, but most factions don't really care. Most of the interest groups don't care about this. So with that, uh, we wouldn't irritate anybody if we want the private health insurance. Just make the industrialists happy. But yeah, we're going to go with this one, guys. I think it makes more sense for France and for Napoleon. So not a great chance of success. We'll have to see what happens there. Uh, but yeah, the, the Catholic Church is now quite pleased with us. So we're getting that increased authority. That'll help us get the law enacted faster because, yeah, we're actually 
using all our authority. Currently, might want to get some of that back. And uh, the industrialists are probably not going to be happy with this now. Yeah. And looks like we are no longer getting this penalty from them either. So that's good. So we can take a look, see if there's anybody here who might want to stop suppressing. So we can get this law passed faster. Yeah, I could either do the intelligentsia or the raw folk. The intelligentsia actually likes us. And there's some stuff here that they would agree with us on. So maybe the rural folk are the bigger problem, because I don't think there's much of anything that they agree with us on. Yeah, not really. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't support anything. Um, so let's stop suppressing the intelligentsia. We'll keep boosting the armed forces, though. Clearly they need it. And that'll get us a bit more authority so we can reduce the enactment time. Try and get this law passed a little bit faster because that success chance is not fantastic. It's pretty low actually. So hopefully we get some positive events here. Uh, one of our generals died. Okay. And the industrialists are now powerful since we're not uh, suppressing them any longer. Strange bedfellows. Alright, so we've seen this event and past series, I believe. So we can say destroying the establishment requires sol solidarity among all sorts and increase both their power. Uh, we don't want to do that. This all improves the monarchist cause here, but yeah, we don't need to, to boost that. So yeah, this is fine doing this because yeah, this would hurt them both, which is exactly what we want. And that'll just tick back up anyways. And we got an uh, election popping up. So we'll see well, it's easier to really see here, uh, the parties. So the industrials have separated from the party of order. All right, interesting. So we're going to wait until the end of the election before we change up our government, but it is contested now, uh, giving us a negative one uh, interest group approval. Okay, so clearly after this election, we're going to need to change up our government. We'll see exactly what ends up happening with this. But yeah, they did split off from the party of order. Okay, so we'll probably have a, a different government set up here after this election. Which having four interest groups in the government is a little bit too much anyways. And I don't even think we have the interest group of our leader in there, which is why it's so low. Yeah, because he's with the bourgeoisie. So might want to bring them in. I don't know. Might boost the legitimacy up some. So we did increase the enactment success chance, so we're at 30% now. So that's good. So we did get lucky there. Wasn't sure how it would go. So yeah, we're going to wait until, let's see if we can get to the end of the election. Depends on how much stuff we have to do, how many events and stuff we have to interact with. And we've got a bunch of stuff set up to build here. There's a re revolt going on in Indonesia currently. And how are we doing on getting infamy ticked down? It's slow. Slow process, guys. So Commander commends the Civic Coalition. This is one of our generals, and he's supporting the Republican Union, bringing in question the political neutrality of the army. And which one of the parties is this? Just take a look here. So that's over here. Oh, okay. So you got all three of these in a party together, so we can't just add the bourgeoisie to the government. All right, so we're not going to want to do that. So basically, we want them to do as horribly in the election as possible. Could make them into a leader, and that might be good, depending on who the current leader of the rural folk is. If he's a radical, he is. So it'd probably be good to, to bring him in. Now, he has 15 units, but he's already given the, uh, the clout for that because he's already in the rural folk. So, I mean, it's not going to change anything there. In fact, I think this is just better. I don't know how popular he is. He's actually not very popular at all. And look at the rural folk currently. And this guy here is loved. So this is actually in our best interest to have him become the leader of the rural folk. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, a revolution in New England. Oh, wow, look at this. The United States has, well, there's a couple situations going on here. So first of all, you had the American liberal revolt and so this is a revolt of the North. 
against the rest of the country. And that's because you have a southerner in charge here. Although it's still only 1849 here, but yeah, that's interesting. We have the, the North has revolted against the southern president. And so the Civil War is a very different situation this time. And then Oregon here is its own separate power. Looks like they're a puppet of the Russians. Wow. Okay, so they're not under the British or the Americans. So historically, there was an agreement. Uh, you know, at the, at the 49th parallel? I believe it was the 49th. That's where they set the border. There's a lot of conflict over this because Americans, many Americans wanted more. And, of course, the British felt like this was all theirs. They both had a claim here. And they originally had an agreement where they both had equal access to the Oregon Territory. But the Americans took advantage of that more. And so there was a lot more Americans in Oregon than there was Canadians or uh, you know British citizens. And so the Americans felt like it should rightfully be theirs. And because of the war with Mexico, it resulted in the Americans... Well, some Americans felt this way. If this was true or not, is debatable. But some felt that we gave up more uh, here in Oregon country than we needed to because we wanted to focus on Mexico. So some people criticized the president for that. Uh, but essentially, we, we did agree on the line here. And so this became part of Canada and this became part of the United States. And it seems pretty normal now that it's like that. But it wasn't, this whole territory was in question at the time. And so that wasn't a for sure thing that it was going to look like that. Uh, but instead, here, the Russians have it, which, you know, they still have Alaska. They haven't sold that to the United States. I assume they wouldn't want to sell it to the United States now since they have Oregon uh, as a subject. So very interesting situation, historical divergences happening, happening in North America. A little surprised with that. So I don't know if we're going to be able to make it to this election, guys. I know it's only two months here, but... But I wasn't intending on ending the episode, and we got a lot of stuff happening as well here. I don't want to feel like I can't get involved in something I might normally get involved in. Just because it's towards the end here. Like, for instance, you have this revolt here, and this is the Dutch East Indies. And while I really don't care about this, you do have a lot of great powers involved. Spain, Austria, Russia. And then you have the American conflicts as well. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really want to get involved in that either, but... Very interesting situation here. I mean, they're the free states of America, currently. With the capital in New York City. And... The United States is offering this obligation if we'll back them against the free states. I feel like the free states... Would be the ones that we would support, though. If we were to support any side. So we're going to decline that. Yeah, I don't really have any interest involved in that. Now, we did get an event, uh, an event about the health taxes. You know, this, this law that we're trying to pass here. So with the calls for some form of health care system, many are questioning where the money for setting up the new health care system will come from. Some are suggesting simply taking it from our tax funds, while others insist the government should find another way to cover the cost. So we could take it from the tax funds. That's going to cost us a lot. Uh, but we do get a 20% enactment success chance bonus. Industrialists would get irritated with us. Yeah, and they're already not very happy with us, probably because we're passing this law here. He said the government should cover the cost, and that'd be way more expensive. We get a 30% bonus to the enactment success chance. Or we just say we can get by without it and you get a 10% bonus. You don't pay for anything. Yeah, let's just go with that. Hopefully they don't forget it. All right, so the election is done. And you see the party of order did very well. Uh, they're in the government, and we, we expected them to do well. Union of Rights got 20%. The Democratic Alliance got 14.7%, and the Republican Union did not do that well. Uh, so that's that's good. All right, so we might want to, to change this up and maybe kick out the Democratic Alliance. I don't know. We'll see which one's the, the best option for us. So this option here leaves the Party of Order and the Union of Rights in. And it's the best one. So that's what we're going to do. Let's just get them out of here. And that's clearly the best option, getting us up to the 77 legitimacy, which is just barely a legitimate government. Well, that's what we're going to have to do. All right, so we're going to confirm that. And so now the intelligentsia are no longer in the government. Okay. So, I'm going to land.
landowners no longer happy? I can't tell. <laughs> it got a deactivated and an activated at the same time. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll just declare a neutrality in both of these. And that is unfortunately going to be the last thing that we do in today's episode. We're in November 10th, 1849 currently. Uh, working on getting this, this law passed here and burning off our infamy as we continue to industrialize and improve our economy. Just taking a look at how we compare to our rivals here. And it looks like at GDP we have increased it significantly. So we have stepped up, and a, and a big part of that was the conquest of uh, all this North African territory here. We are now stepped up to the point where we are above both Russia and the British. And we have, among the great powers, the number one economy in the world. Whereas China and India, the East India Company, uh, they have higher GDPs. But among the great powers, we're number one. And so we're already moving above our uh, our rivals. And you can see that our standard of living has also increased. So we're doing pretty well there. Our population well above the British population, but uh, you know, as it expects, still below Russia. And Austria is far behind everybody else. So yeah, we're doing pretty well, guys. The conquest of North Africa was, was quite helpful for us. Uh, so now we just need to burn off this infamy so we can continue with our conquest here. And we'll go after that next, that little tiny territory. It shouldn't cost much. I just don't want anybody else involved, but you know what? Since they're all in other conflicts, are the British in another conflict? If the British help out in any of these, because they're the ones I don't want to get involved. So we're waiting for them to go into a war. Because they're the ones that I think most likely to support them. So yeah, that's what we're waiting on, and then we'll, we'll get them uh, conquered. Because yeah, the infamy's not that bad. It just ticks down really, really slow. Because of that penalty we have. But yeah, I want to finish up over here before we do anything in Europe. Let's just continue strengthening ourselves. And we've got to build a fleet eventually, guys. Uh, if we want to compare with the British, we need to build a fleet. They have 150 ships, we have 84. So we've got to build our, our navy up. Now, when it comes to the military, or, or excuse me, the army, uh, you see we are doing pretty good. We have a much larger uh, army than, than the British do uh, with all those new barracks that we have in North Africa. Uh, so I'm not too worried about the army. It's the navy that we need to invest in before we... We go to war with the, the European powers. So let's do the easy expansion first and focus on colonization. And then we'll try and do some, some European conflicts. And, uh, you know, eventually our economy, you know, it's taken off, as we've seen. And so we're going to have uh, higher economic resources than our rivals do. Uh, so I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you on the next one. And thanks for watching.